Welcome to Tennis Spin, where we put our spin on your tennis. So viewer question today, guys. Sasha Newman from Bremerhaven, Germany, has a question about stringing two or four knots. Which one is better? I will cover that. Stay tuned. So Sasha Newman from Germany writes, I have one question. What are the pros and cons of stringing with two or four knots? My local tennis shop strings my rackets most of the time with two knots. Only my old Prince Precision Destroyer 600 PL was strung with four knots. My old Kniesel Master 10 Head Graphene Touch Speed MP, Prince Extender Lightning 730PL were strung with two knots. A few days ago, I brought another two rackets, an old Puma Boris Becker winner and a new Head Graphene 360 Extreme to the tennis shop to get them strung and asked explicitly to string them with four knots without knowing what the difference is between two and four knots? Well, that's a great question. I actually feel that question a few times a month because people do ask me um, who are kind of technical about this stuff. So what is the difference between two and four knots? Or um, people also ask me or tell me, I want one piece stringing, meaning one continuous string. Or they tell me two piece stringing, meaning cut it in half and I want half of it on the main and half of it on the cross. Well, why one piece? Why two piece? Why two knots? Why four knots? Well, so here's the thing. This is how I was taught um, way back when, like 30 plus years ago, by the person who taught me. Um, if a racket like this Ultra 108, right? If it ends on the bottom, right? The mains end on the bottom, which as you can see, this does because the green string here um, is knotted off here. If it ends on the bottom, you do two piece stringing. So you cut it in half and you have four knots, okay? But why, why do you do that? So the way I was taught is that you want the pressure of the strings on the crosses to start from top and go steadily to the bottom of the racket. Now I asked that, I asked probably what you guys are wondering, what does it matter? Why do you want to do that? Well, the answer that was given to me was that the racket can withstand more pressure from the top in the beginning than on the bottom. When you put tension uh, starting from throat up, you put too much pressure on the bottom part, which could crack this part here, you know, the, the throat part. And it's not meant for that. So it's meant to take tension from top to bottom. Now, I actually did a test to see um, if I actually felt a difference if when I strung bottom to top versus top to bottom, there actually is a difference. So there was a difference in feel when you did it top down versus down up, bottom up. Um, I want to say it felt a little tighter um, and more consistent uh, when you went top down. There was definitely a different feeling when you went bottom up. Now, so this particular racket 
um, is supposed to be and should be strung with two pieces as we did here. So you see four knots starting knot here and then these are the uh, ending knots basically. These are three ending knots. On the other hand, this strike, as you can see, has just two knots, one here and one here. So this ended on the top, right? Just naturally. Therefore, we just went top down, right? So this was an ending knot, and that was an ending knot. So that's easy. So two companies in the world require that you string two pieces. Yonex and Head. Um, I'm not sure if they currently still require it, but there is definitely writing in a lot of places that I've seen, uh, at least on my side, you know, the business side of the racket business. It says, if you do not string with four knots, two pieces, warranty will be void, which means if your racket cracks and they see that you strung with one piece stringing or two knots, your racket is void of your warranty. So I've seen that on Yonex and I've seen that written on head. Therefore, if you own a Yonex racket or a head racket, I would suggest you do two pieces or four knots, okay? Because it explicitly says that. A lot of people actually ask me, um, what's better for the racket? Is two piece better or is one piece better for the racket? Well, I'm gonna explain that to you right now. Um, at the machines though, with two rackets that I have already pre-strung um, through the mains, okay? Stay tuned. All right, so what's good for the racket? What's good for tension maintenance? What's good for tension loss? So I have a Pure Strike 100 here that I've already done the mains on. Uh, one piece stringing because it ends on the top. So look, let's take a look at what we have here. So I got the short side on this side and the rest of the string on this side. So what's gonna happen next? I'm gonna run um, the rest of this, this string down the crosses, right? And then I'm gonna tie this off over here and then tie this off over here, right? So what's gonna happen, what's gonna happen to my tension? What's gonna happen to this knot, right? And what's gonna happen to the end knot? So I know, just because I've done this racket so many times, that I tie off here at this hole, and I'm probably gonna tie off here at this hole. So it's right here. So what's gonna happen? I'm probably gonna lose a bit of tension here because of this. I'm gonna lose the tension here because that's my last main on this side. And I'm gonna lose a little tension here because it's gonna be my last cross on this side. <clears throat> Therefore, I know that it's gonna be tension loss a bit here and tension loss a bit here. And then this side, right? will not lose tension because it's consistently pulling. So, I mean, it's okay, you know, because you're going up 10%. So don't forget 10%, right? Go up 10% more tension when you're doing those knot holes. So, I mean, I say that's okay. It's not bad, right? But you know that you're gonna lose tension here and you're gonna lose tension there. Now, let's go over to the other machine where I did two piece stringing. Okay, let's move on over. So on this Wilson Blade 98S, the mains end on the bottom. So we know that, you know, I did 10% here and 10% here because there's gonna be loss of tension in the knot, right? So we're gonna knot it up here 
and I'm going to start the main up here, right? Again, probably 10% here and 10% here. So I always tell people that I, I mean, I personally string my own rackets two piece. So always two piece. You guys know I use Selenko Confidential, right? So it's, I don't do a hybrid, so I can easily do one piece, but I choose to do two piece because I know that it's going to be a consistent, right? Either loss of tension or a consistent extra 10% on this one, this one, this one, and this one. So at least I know that it's okay for the racket and it's probably more consistent uh, for the string bed, at least for me, right? If you think about it, you know that it's going to be a, a square, that you're going to lose tension, of, you know, because there's going to be four knots, right? Whereas, whereas, going back to the Babylon, you know that you're going to lose a bit here and you're going to lose a bit here. So it's going to be a little uneven there. I know most people aren't going to, um, you know, feel that or notice it too much. But I mean, maybe it's more of a psychological thing for me, but I just prefer two piece stringing. Um, but it depends, like depends on the racket, depends on how sensitive you are to it. I mean, I've had pro players um, tell me, right, on like a prestige pro, like I want, or prestige MP, that I want one piece stringing, or on a Dunlop 18 by 20, I want one piece stringing. And I know full well that it's gonna end on the bottom, right, that it's gonna go bottom top, but that's what they're used to. Okay, so that's what I recommend. But there are exceptions to at least my rule. Um, certain rackets require you to do two pieces. Some of those Prince O3s, uh, basically first thing is say, cut it in half. You got to do this racket two pieces. One piece will not work. Um, that Babolat Pure Strike VS or those Pure Controls, uh, Pure Storms, that are like 10.4 ounces, 16 by 19s, those don't give you holes to do hybrids very well. So therefore you actually are forced to do bottom up if you're doing a hybrid. So you actually have to start bottom up on the crosses. There's no tie off holes at the top, unless you wanna bore out one of those grommets um, that aren't meant to be a tie hole. So after my years of trying, I pretty much said, this has got to be bottom up um, on those VS uh, strikes or controls or storms, whatever model uh, there is. Uh, but yeah, some rackets force you to use one piece or have to go bottom up. So I get that. Um, but, you know, just this is my feeling. This is what I've learned in my 30 plus years. Um, I just think two piece, uh, four knots is better for the racket. It's probably better for consistency in your string bed too. All right. So thank you, Sasha, for the question. Hope everything's okay over there in Germany. Hope you're doing well. Before I go, uh, wanted just to show you, I got some cool merch now at my store. TennisSpinUSA.com. Uh, you can get this proper yellow mask to protect yourself. And it's handmade by Jules. Uh, this will be the perfect, most comfortable mask you've ever worn. Um, I wear these every day and I don't even know I have it on. I actually walked out to the court and started playing and, and totally forgot that I had it on my face, right? It's that comfortable. Um, it's adjustable with this little dot. And you will have this, uh, hopefully, through the pandemic. Uh, and it'll save you, right? This will be the most comfortable mask you've ever had. Um, I also got 
tees, long sleeve tees, pop sockets, dampeners, um, and I got hats coming too. All right, so check out the shop, tennisspinusa.com. Thank you for watching Tennis Spin, where we put our spin on your tennis.